Welcome back. Um, today we are going to discuss about the effect of downsampling in the frequency domain. Um, in the previous videos we had discussed about um, how the downsampling uh, affects the time frequency indexing, right? And we also discussed about the uh, maximum digital frequencies. So all the analog frequencies that we have can be captured in the digital domain in the Fourier transform um, in the frequency range of 0 to fs by 2. Okay, so and we also have the time frequency indexing relationship of the uh, analog or continuous time to the discrete domain. So let's uh, uh, mark these three important relationships before we proceed and then we will discuss about uh, what happens when we do the downsampling and what are the effects um, in the frequency domain, what happens in the spectrum of the signal. Okay, so the first relationship that we had derived was the equivalence relationship, right? So let me change the color here. Um, so the first equivalence relationship that we had derived was k times n by capital N was equivalent to f times t, right, in the continuous time domain. The next relationship that we had derived was if I do the downsampling by factor of t, then how does it map to? So it maps to um, k times n divided by d, right? Or d is your downsampling factor. Um, so this is the equivalent mapping between the samples which were originally sampled at 1x from the analog signal, correct? And then I further downsample. I downsample by factor of d. Okay, so it is 1 by dx. So we had discussed about that, what happens to the indexing. And the third relationship that we had derived was that all the frequencies that are captured uh, in the digital domain, right, uh, in the process of the sampling, can be expressed by the sampling frequency FFS is equal to 2 times F, the analog frequency. Uh, all the information that I have in the analog domain can be captured by FS by 2 from the range fs by 2. So this can be expressed as f is equivalent to half of f, half of fs. Okay, this is the end of the way of representation and this is more commonly used. So when I try to express the spectrum in the frequency domain, all the information that is contained inside the analog signal will be represented between 0 and fs by 2. And if I go beyond that, it is simply the image. So when I take the Fourier transform, the transform Fourier transform is going to show us the signal uh, the spectrum between 0 to fs but the the part of the spectrum that is important to us is only how fs by 2 because that is the actual representation or the capturing of the analog spectrum into the discrete domain okay so with this information let us proceed and try to figure out what happens in the um, frequency domain when we do the downsampling okay so um, we'll take a couple of examples here and um, then we will do some numerical uh, programming as well and try to I'll try to show you the effects of the downsampling and then we will touch on the aliasing effect as well at the end of the day okay so um, so let's go back to our previous representation how we used to express the uh, things in the frequency domain um, using the index k and uh, the number of sampling points right so let us say this is the frequency domain representation. This is my analog frequency. Remember, this is the analog frequency. It is not the digital uh, frequency. Okay, and I let's say I have got um, some sinusoid of um, some frequency. Okay, so it is a pure tone in the frequency domain, right? So let us say that the tone is sitting somewhere here. And originally, I have the sampling frequency fs. This is my original sampling frequency, fs. It, what I am trying to say here is, I have some analog frequency, okay, some continuous time domain signal, which I have sampled at rate fs. Okay, and now this fs, I am going to further down sample by the factor of 2. And try to uh, see what actually happens when we do the down sampling. Okay, so this is uh, the simple representation of a pure sinusoidal tone and we can call this as the magnitude okay and so this is the tone sitting at some index let's say the index is 2 so it is uh, the k is equal to 2 it means that um, it has only one cycle of sinusoid right so um, so from the previous video we had seen that all the frequencies of interest are uh, can be represented when f equals to fs by 2 
right so this is fs by 2 this point let's say this is f is equal to fs by 2 this point is fs by 2 so this is the region that is of interest to us okay all the information of my analog signal is captured in this region all these regions is supposed to be the image frequency so i will have one image here just for the sake of complete uh, completeness i will have the image here and this thing goes ex it, it keeps on going okay up to infinity plus infinity and this thing goes in this direction to minus infinity it is periodic in nature so as you keep on increasing the frequencies you will see these replicas of the sinusoids getting repeated all the way up to the infinite frequencies right so so from now on um, we will represent all our analog signal spectrum uh, in the range of 0 to fs by 2 and these will be the image frequency so just for the sake of completeness i will put up to fs but um, i will also represent from now on fs by 2 right so um, let's uh, put this uh, the indices properly so let's say like i have n number of points I have n number of points so I have a sinusoid of n number of points and I'm taking of n times Fourier transform n points Fourier transform okay and this is how it looks like now our objective is to understand what actually happens when we do the downsampling in the frequency domain right so um, in order to understand this thing better um, we need to understand uh, it's a kind of a rule of thumb Okay, let me change the color here. It's a rule of thumb that you need to remember and I call it as a fault line the rule of fault lines. So um, uh, Okay, I'm going into a bit of a geology, but uh, it helps me to understand this concept better um, So if you have some other way of understanding doesn't uh, doesn't matter as long as you understand that is more important um, for me right, so um, This is my fault line remember that this is my fault line I will call this fs by 2 as the fault line right now I want to downsample I want to downsample the signal uh, by the factor of 2 so uh, remember that I have got an analog signal here um, this hasn't come just out of anywhere okay so this is the Fourier transform of my analog signal so I'm saying that well okay I have got a nice sinusoid something like this and this sinusoid has got some sampling frequency okay this sinusoid has some sam some sampling frequency let's say i'm picking up six samples out of this sinusoid and when i take the fourier transform of it it looks something like this now what my objective is now instead of taking six samples my fs let us say it is six samples um, it is six samples per second now i'm taking new fs let's call it as f dash s um, that is three samples i'm only picking up three samples per second just an hypothetical example i'm giving so it means that over the entire cycle I am picking up three samples so in that context what I'll, I'll do here is um, so that sinusoidal representation so I will have I'll just change the color okay so I have the same sinusoid here so instead of picking six samples now I'm going to pick up I'm supposed to pick up three samples over the cycle right so let's say this is one this is two this is three well it is not exactly evenly spaced but just um, for the sake of example let's take I'm um, uh, let's stick to it that I'm taking three samples out of it right so um, so because I'm taking three samples then n which is the total number of samples that I have here n is equal to six now I hear n has become equal to three so when I map into the Fourier I'm going to take the Fourier transform right so this n also will reduced and we have seen that in our previous video that it gets reduced by the factor of d that is what we have represented here now how do we represent the spectrum so if I have an original spectrum which is sampled at FS and I am downsampling it by factor of D uh, what is a uh, good rule of thumb so that I can understand it immediately or I can answer the question immediately so the idea is that this is the fault line okay and uh, when I do the downsampling it means that when I uh, take uh, the, if I reduce the number of samples from n if I reduce to n by 2 then in that case all the samples which are sitting near the fault line it's simply it's, it's are simply going to be eliminated okay so we have to say this is uh, in context to this particular examples because here you see that we have zeros here right we have all zeros there's um, the values the samples that we have they are all zeros so it, it's kind of these guys they simply uh, get absorbed into inside this uh, fault line something like this and it kind of pulls it kind of pulls both these things in this direction okay 
both the sides of the spectrum in this direction so what will happen is the index is not going to change okay this index will remain as it is when I do the downsampling but the number of points that I have to represent the spectrum will reduce by the factor of 2 okay so in that uh, context how am I going to represent this uh, spectrum so the in the spectrum here the sinusoid tone at index 2 will remain as it is okay nothing is going to happen there but now let's say I have got uh, here I have I'm have taking six samples right so let us say this n is equal to six so now it will just be three okay so other points will simply disappear so I will have um, let us say this is the half of it so now my new fs my new fs is sitting here okay let me call it as f dash s and this is fs f dash s by two right f dash s by two this is the um, just like just similar to this f equals to fs by 2 now I have f equals to f dash f dash of s by 2 and I will have a another tone here so what has happened is simply um, around this fault line okay it has got absorbed or it has um, it kind of uh, pulls both the spectrums uh, around this fault line and so I'm going to see the spectrum something like this so one thing to notice is that the index of the sinusoid is never going to change okay if the sinusoid was appearing at this index too it is always going to appear at the same index okay that is very important point um, okay so this example is um, with reference to the band uh, it is uh, it is not a band pass signal or a band limited signal it is just a pure sinusoidal tone okay so in that context everything looks good but what happens if I have a signal which has got a band of frequencies in it okay so um, let us try to analyze um, such kind of signals as well and uh, try to derive some kind of a rule of thumb uh, so that it gives us the understanding of how the downsampling is going to look like okay so let me change the color here so now now here I have got a signal which has got a band okay so let us stick to our original uh, notation so this is fs right this is my frequency spectrum f this is my fs by 2 so this is fs by 2 and now i have a signal which has got a band of frequencies in it so um, when i do the fourier transform it is going to show me a spectrum correct it is going to show me a spectrum so let us say the spectrum looks something like this um, it looks something like this this is the spectrum now as we have um, shown before that all the analog frequencies right can be represented between 0 and fs by 2 itself and rest of it is actually the image of it so we will have an image here we will have an image here so let us have an image something like this so this is how the image looks like and as um, uh, I have told before in the previous example it goes up to infinity this goes up to infinity this goes up to minus infinity so it is periodic in nature so if you if you if you keep on increasing your analog frequency and correspondingly you keep on increasing your sampling frequency as well so basically you you will be shifting in this direction up to infinity and anywhere you go up to infinity you will just simply uh, see the periodic repetition of the same spectrum in both the directions okay so now um, as we have seen before um, we have defined this point as our fault line correct um, this is a fault line and um, as we downsample it is simply going to pull the spectrums okay from this direction into this so the same relationship will hold so if I do the downsampling right so um, it is going to pull the spectrum in both these directions now remember here I do not have any uh, frequencies or I, I do not at these frequencies I do not have any spectrum so basically here there is a kind of a void and here there is a kind of a void right there is nothing here the, all the samples all the points here are basically zeros so when it tries to pull the spectrum uh, around this line um, we are not going to lose our signal as long as I am pulling up to this point as long as I am pulling up to this point if I pull beyond that then something is going to happen and we will discuss that thing when we discuss the aliasing effect um, but up to this point um, we uh, what you need to understand is that um, if I do the downsampling of my signal then the signal will be pulled along the along the fault line and the number of points that I'm going to have in the frequency domain will reduce by the downsampling factor but the shape of the spectrum is not going to change or the index on indices on which the spectrum appears is not going to change right so that is the take from this video um, and uh, I will uh, have one numerical example
Uh, we'll do some octree programming and we'll try to represent the same thing and we'll try to see how it looks like in the um, frequency domain and time domain and in the uh, numerical domain. Okay, so I will see you in the next video.